first of all, uh, what were you doing before you got here? Tell me about your travels. Uh, just got back two months ago from a round the world trip without flying. So uh, without flying. Global circumnavigation without going anywhere near an airport. Really? Yeah. Did you have like one of those like paddle boats, or like how did you uh, do it quite. between continents on the ocean? Or? Uh, cargo okay. ships are the big blue wobbly bits, okay. and uh, buses and trains and the odd belligerent camels and the rest. Okay. When you say around the world, or like pole to pole, or like. We went around the around the, the flat way. The flat so, way. Uh, so Had the least resistance. Yeah. So heading east all the way around. Huh. Where did you go? Did you have fun? Uh, it was amazing. Yeah, we went uh, through Europe and then Trans-Siberian Express, down through Mongolia, China, and Southeast Asia, then a cargo ship to Australia, another one across to New Zealand, and the big monster journey across the Pacific, uh, 16 days crossing crossing the ocean, um, and then down through Central America to Costa Rica and a banana boat home to the UK. Goodness gracious! <laughs> what brought you here after all that? Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a big passionate advocate of trying to get the creative industries. And kind of the cultural side of things involved in the challenge of sustainability and climate change in particular and so you know I want to help spread the word you know and I'm, I've been writing about my trip and, and why that's supposed to drive kind of climate change action and you know actually the worst thing we can probably do as individuals when we're talking about action what we can do is take a flight so uh, yeah. that tends to drive a coach and horses through your personal carbon budget so I was trying to prove that the alternative can be attractive and fun. Huh. Did you see anything on your travels that really brought uh, climate change to reality for you? Uh, well, yeah, loads. I mean, we were in some pretty harsh places. Uh, we've traveled through Siberia, so you're seeing the kind of the spring melt coming a lot earlier, the ice is melting, the tundra's melting. Uh, there's all sorts of kind of thawing kind of processes going on there far earlier in the season than they would normally happen. And then when we're in Australia, they're experiencing their thousand year drought. Yeah. Or is it actually just a kind of result of what's actually going on in terms of the, the climate? So you've got huge water issues there, and then in Central America, uh, issues around deforestation, disappearance of amphibians from Costa Rica, and these are kind of barometers of what happens when you see a climatic shift. Yeah. Is there anything that you saw today in particular that you felt could really be useful for delivering these messages to the public? I think it's just the galvanization of folk. I mean, what I've been banging on about, and I've been doing this for like two or three years, was saying, where's the cultural response to climate change? You know, As the world wakes up, where is our, our kind of artistic channels to actually get the message across? And if, if art is to the community what the dream is to, to the individual, how do we get that message out there? And I think that's what's been missing. And I think it's starting to change. But you know, we, we need people to encapsulate both the kind of the danger of the challenge, if you like the kind of Armageddon scenario if we don't get this right in the next seven to ten years. But also, and perhaps more importantly, is the positive vision of the sustainable future. It's like, what does it look like? What are we going to get out of it? How do we capture the public imagination about the destination we're headed to if we get things right? Mm. Is there anything that you took away from today that you might use in the next year? Or like anything that you plan to do in the next year that you will bring to next year's meeting? Uh, I love the music. The music? Yeah, no, it's the music, musicians which really got to me today. I mean, I've, I'm, a, I'm a climate change geek. I've been working in this for you know, 10 years, so I mean, the joke is when we started working on it, it was like kind of wetting yourself whilst wearing a dark suit, you know. No one noticed, but it gave you a warm feeling inside. <laughs> uh, and obviously that's shifted on now, and now yeah. climate change is everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so for me, we're hearing about some of the techie stuff and the events, mm. that's great. But what always gets me is the, the proper kind of cultural manifestation of the art, and so it's the music which touched me. The music, is that what you'd say would be the best way to inspire people? Why, why not? I mean, we, we are going to a point now where it's by any means necessary, but we need to get the message out there in every way we possibly can. Um, awareness is right, attitudes are shifting, and the real challenge now is how we get people to actually take action and understand that personal responsibility is the key. Because in many ways, we can't wait for government and business to take action. It's actually down to us. Um, and in one way, that's kind of terrifying. The other way, it's quite exciting. And I think that's where culture starts to play its role.